Right, okay, so we'll make a start, please. So, um, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Mike Jones. I'm Senior Regional Director for Reed in the Northern Home Counties. Uh, I've been with Reed for 15 years. Um, and I think it's safe to say this year's definitely been the strangest one that we've all been through and the most challenging. So thank you for joining us today. I think this is a really important topic given that working from home is becoming more and more prevalent. Um, and I just wanted to, before we move on to the speakers, just to give a, a really positive message that yes, there are still some bumps in the road in the economy, but I think we are coming out the other side of it and 2021 looks like it's gonna be a really good year for everyone. Um, and I also wanna say a, a very quick thank you to Reed. Um, my company who I, I love working for, they've looked after us incredibly well through the pandemic and our purpose as a company is to improve lives through work and I really feel like we've lived up to that. So just a quick plug for us for, for looking after all of our co-members so well. Um, but why are we here today? So we're here for two reasons. Um, the first most important is that there's been a lot said about mental well-being. And I'm a, a real believer in that good physical health um, helps with your mental well-being. So we wanted to make sure that in this new age where working from home is becoming incredibly commonplace, that your workplaces are set up properly. Um, and the other one is that during lockdown, I somehow managed to get a grade two and grade one tear in my left ankle doing PE with Joe Wicks, um, which I can't see you all laughing, but I'm sure some of you are. Um, and that led me to meet Fatima, who did my treatment, and then Jamie, who did my rehab. And they are absolutely exceptional at what they do. Uh, my foot is 100% back to normal now, um, and I can run again, and I'm, I'm ever so thankful for that. But I wanted to share what they know with you today. So um, Jamie's gonna run us through um, some questions on posture and getting your desk set up properly at home and at work. Um, and then Fatima is gonna take us through some desk pilates, which I know we're all looking forward to. And there'll be a chance for a Q&A at the end. Um, you are all muted as attendees, but there is a, a Q&A function up on the top right, I believe. So if you put any questions in there, they will be picked up and we will put them to the speakers. So um, we're going to hand over to our speaker shortly. We've got Jamie Cunningham, who is a rehabilitation specialist, and Fatima Parker, who is a specialist physiotherapist. So Jamie, um, thank you for joining us. Um, what I'd like to start off with, if, if we may, just very briefly, is can you can you tell us how Perfect Balance Clinic operates? Yeah, I think this was important to kind of explain briefly at the start, really, that um, as you've seen, Mike, in your case, that we try to work comprehensively with everyone that we uh, see. We, we adopt this 360 degree approach, and that means that um, even if we look, say, for example, at someone's work setup, their desk setup, we're always trying to use other services that can help get them even better results if they're having a problem. Um, so the idea behind that is that we work on certain things. We have a range of services that range from uh, looking at the way that we walk um, all the way through to maybe having more diagnostic services, something like an ultrasound to check if you've got an injury, something like that, um, particularly maybe in your ankle or something like that. So there's a range of services that we use um, and they used to make sure that we effectively uh, treat people, get them the best results, but also being very clear in kind of what we're doing clinically with them and we know exactly what their problems are. So that's our approach. We've got different locations as well that we work from. And also, of course, in this climate, we are working more re remotely with people uh, doing, um, you know, video sessions on Zoom and things like that to kind of continue uh, healthcare. Um, so that's just kind of like a bit of a brief overview of um, how we work really because um, we believe that kind of comprehensive approach is important. You know, there is figures out there that you can find, um, you know, that shows that, you know, we're spending millions and millions a year on our um, workplace um, staff in terms of the injuries that they're uh, maybe going through, musculoskeletal conditions, you know, back pain, neck pain. So having this um, comprehensive approach, we found is very um, effective at helping as many people as possible, really. So, yeah, just a bit of a... Uh, of you how we work. Thanks Jamie and I, I certainly can back up all of that. I had an ultrasound because I couldn't be seen by the NHS um, and yeah rightly diagnosed what was what was wrong with me. Um, so let's move into it now. Let's let's I guess talk about start off with why these problems occur. So can you describe some of the typical behaviours and habits that you commonly see from workers? Yeah, uh, definitely. There's quite a few, unfortunately, um, that we'll see. And it's even sometimes when they come in to see us in clinic or whether they're online with us on a, on a Zoom session, 
you can take a lot from the way people are just sat. So um, the common ones, if you're in kind of a workspace, whether that be at home or in uh, office, you know, kind of like slouching, um, maybe twisted to one side, maybe having lots of clutter on your desk, which means that you rotate your neck a lot and you look downwards, um, not really having things set up to an optimal height. So that's not going to change your behaviors in which you kind of hold your body. Um, other ones to kind of bear in mind kind of behaviors, we might say, you know, taking little to no break. So often people will say to us that they like to kind of power through lots of lots of work and, you know, spend two, three hours doing that. They find that that's actually more productive. Unfortunately, we do know there is research out there that will show you that that isn't a productive way to actually work. That you can give yourself a chance to kind of do a reset and have a little break kind of every 30, 45 minutes, even just for a minute or even just standing up. And that can be really, really useful. We also get things with people who believe that when they shift to kind of a standing setup, um, whether they've got a kind of a, a desk they can alter or something with, on a razor or something like that, is they do the same thing. They'll kind of lean across the desk as the day goes on because it's quite um, actually tiring if, you, if you've not done that kind of standing desk work for, for a while, have you not done it before? So it's, it's usually little small things, but it's those things that kind of can make the biggest impact really. Um, so we're looking at kind of those types of behaviors uh, really across the day. More commonly, the trend is you'll see them either at the start of the day when they first come to work or later on when they've been working quite um, tirelessly to the point when they do actually get tired. So there's lots of different kind of common behaviors you can pick up on. Um, outside of that, like I said, you can pick up a few that um, you might notice as well um, when a person comes in to see you the way they sit the way they stand, things like that, so yeah. Yeah, straight away though, I know that my desk is way too cluttered. Um, and that's just a nice <laughs> little tip that everyone can take away straight away. Uh, but we don't think about these things sometimes, I guess. Um, so let's move on to a group of questions around posture next. So can, can you explain what posture actually means and why it's so important to us? Yeah, so, so basically we can kind of overthink what posture actually means. And I, I get a lot of people that come in and see me and they'll, they'll you know, they'll try to explain and, and, and worry about that sort of word in itself. But really, it's just the way in which we hold our body. We think about it very simply. Um, it's the way in which we hold our body. Um, that can be, it doesn't necessarily need to be the way we sit. People often find that it, how they feel it's just to do with sitting. It's not, it can be to do with um, the way that you stand, the way that you do an activity, maybe the way that your posture is when you run, whether you're doing something else, maybe swimming. It can be lots of different things. It's not just uh, the way you sit. Um, so basically that's it, it's just the way that we hold our body. Now the importance of it, um, basically what we're thinking about is that our posture has a, a huge impact on our physical and mental well-being. We must remember the mental side of it as well, uh, that's often forgotten. Um, but the idea is that it's important because uh, it has a direct link to kind of our uh, overall function, internal organs, blood circulation, breathing, digestion. Um, so, you know, it affects different things and that's why it's so important really. Um, and that said, I wouldn't say necessarily there's a gold standard or, or, an, or a certain, you know, one or two positions um, that you should be adopting. But as I said, you know, there's different ways in which we can track and, and look at uh, someone's posture. Great. And, and in terms of the next question, and I've seen this myself with a lot of my co-members in the office coming back from lockdown and having severe back pain. Um, so it's, it is regularly said posture and poor working habits directly cause injuries such as back or neck pain. In your experience, would you say that this is the case? Um, yeah, it, it's a good question because um, I think we'll give you a lot of information today about how posture has a link to certain musculoskeletal conditions such as those. Um, they're probably two of the most common ones. Um, I would necessarily wouldn't say that they have a direct link. I think at some level, maybe secondary or maybe at a third level, will have some impact. And this goes back to that comprehensive approach that we take that we might not necessarily think that um, say someone's desk setup is the primary reason but we will certainly be investigating that further because we can make someone more comfortable the likelihood is that we can reduce their back pain even in a, in a short term and um, because we think about it we're in, in those positions for you know so many hours a day every day when we're at work so um, I wouldn't say necessarily it has a direct link um, but I do think there is there is some correlation there, there is a relationship there, but I would say more on a secondary level. Um, you know, my advice for anything like that is that you'll find, and links back to your last question, with posture, keep moving, 
take different positions. Um, so I've picked up a, a, um, a sentence, a clip uh, from a webinar that someone had kind of gone through, and they were saying in, in summary that they said um, our best posture is actually our next posture. So again, this emphasis on moving is actually better than trying to think about these gold standard positions to get yourself in. But no, I wouldn't say kind of um, poor habits have a direct link. I think they can in some ways be an influence towards maybe pains that we get, but I don't think they're necessarily in, in most cases the real reason. Okay, that's interesting to hear because I think a lot of people coming onto this call would have naturally assumed that it would have a direct impact. So it's it's interesting to kind of dispel that myth somewhat. So we've we've talked about why the importance of the, the importance of all this stuff. So time for some solutions, I guess, really. So are there ways in which we can improve our posture? Uh, yes, we can. And I mean Fatima will talk about these a little bit more as well. But I, in my head before I say anything, I think with some of these, it's the idea as a principle is that you're feeding good information to your brain, to your body. Um, your awareness is is part of in, you know, you want to improve your awareness of what's going on. Once you do that and you start feeding good information to your body, you will make change to yourself posturally. If you kind of know to ignore it, you know, again, you feed into that negative side of things. It's all about mindset, really. Um, but yeah, there are different ways that we can improve our posture, certainly. So we can be thinking about um, the way that in which we set up our equipment as a, as a sort of a first point, and that's whether we're working at home or from our office. Um, do we have things set to the right height? Are we using additional equipment to maybe hold, say, an iPad into a better position rather than holding it ourselves? Um, are we using our phone a lot? Things like that. Can we make things more handheld? Can we use um, Bluetooth devices? So different equipment is certainly one. Um, I mentioned before about kind of understanding um, what those bad habits are, so thinking about your awareness as well. Um, regular breaks, so as I said, moving around every 30, 45 minutes, if you can at least spend two minutes maybe going to the other side of the office, maybe think of it instead of sending that email to a colleague, why not go to the other side of the office and have a quick chat with them. You kind of do both then, you've done the task of email and you've got up and, and moved around. A good way to kind of keep into a routine with that, you can set timers, uh, you know, reminders on your phone, you know, every half an hour, every hour, you know, within that reason, just to take a break, maybe stand. Can you work out your routines before they start on the day? Do you know if you've got a meeting that maybe doesn't require you to maybe take notes? Could you try and do that meeting in standing? If, of course, you've got means to kind of do some standing work. Again, it's all about changing those positions as much as you can, really. Um, another one, of course, is exercise. You know, this is you know a critical part as well. Is can you be doing exercise? Maybe some of you watching today uh, like to take part in, part in maybe yoga or uh, Pilates, or you have a PT that you work with. Whatever it is, I don't necessarily say there's one particular type of exercise that might be better than others. But you know, you'll find out of your own interests ones that work best for you. But in general, just doing exercises, maybe some stretches from those routines and sessions you do at work, you know, every kind of, if you could do them, you know, be once or twice a day across the day. If you're working from home, obviously there's more means and maybe more space for you to do some exercise as well. Uh, they would be kind of be my top tips to try and improve your posture over time. This is not something that you can necessarily just improve uh, completely in a couple of weeks, but you can certainly make some good inroads, I believe. OK, so I, th I think there's a couple of things there. Bluetooth devices, I think that's a, a key takeaway and, and essentially moving a lot. Keep moving. Um, <laughs> so, so we've said about that for, for posture. Um, in terms of the, the guidelines that you'd recommend for the desk setup, both at home and at work, what, what would they be? Uh, this is the kind of a key one if you kind of look in even now at your desk and how that looks. Now, that with an office setup. Ideally, we want a chair that's nice and supportive. Um, we call them more of an ergonomic type chair. The old standard of an office chair would kind of cut quite low and probably only come up to about maybe the mid back level. So you're looking for a chair that's supportive. If it does also have an extender, now unfortunately mine doesn't today, but you can get chairs that kind of have a headrest as well. That's really good for your neck. So that's making sure you've got a chair. Also with arm rest, that's useful. Again, this is going to spot us posture for our shoulders and our arms or elbows. And the idea is that with anything like our screen, so if we look externally to the screens and across our desk, a screen level, the top of that screen should be level with the top of our eye line. So really, we shouldn't be kind of looking at a screen that's kind of 
Um, for example, our eye line is towards the middle of the screen. We should align them both, make sure that our neck is a neutral. Our keyboard and mouse shouldn't be too far away so that we don't start to stretch our arms and straighten them. Our arms should be nice and relaxed across the armrest. Um, if we need any cushioning across the keyboard and the mouse, uh, then again with the mats, then that can help as well to cushion your wrist. Um, other than that, making sure that you've got plenty of space underneath your desk, then you're going to have a good setup. Now, it's usually about the smaller things. I think most people have some form of ability to raise their desk at work or they have a stand which can kind of alter its height. Or maybe the screens are on a bracket and they can be moved slightly up and down. So you're always going to find means in which you can kind of play around with that equipment. Another thing to mention, if you are someone that works from documents a lot, then you might want to have a document holder, making sure that's central to the screen between the keyboard and the actual screen itself so that it's nice and central. We're not doing too much of our uh, neck movements or rotating. Now, that would be more of an office setup. That would be very similar at home. However, at home, I understand we're probably more likely to use kind of like laptops, um, iPads, but things like that. You need additional setup. You need things, for example, like a docking station, an external screen that that um, screen from the laptop can be projected onto. They're really useful, but it's the same principles. It's the same thing. We had a screen at home. We want it to be level so that eyeline is level with the top of that screen. Mouse and keyboard aren't too far away, so we're not stretching. Um, example, um, if you're using an iPad, you can get stands for these to raise them as well. You can get external keyboards, and obviously they will work very um, wireless mouse. So making sure that these are kind of the key tips I would give for kind of people that work in office and home, really. Um, overall, and there's little, there's other bits you can go into, but those, those are kind of your um, key parts to look at. Perfect. Thank you, Jamie. And then um, we've got some questions coming through, which we'll go through after Fatima's Des Pilates. Um, last question for you, though, Jamie. So um, are there any additional considerations you try to take into account beyond just the workstation setup? Yeah, so I, like I said, there was some additional ones I've been looking at, particularly this time of year. You've got to think about your lighting as well. Obviously, we're into kind of winter months. Um, Daylight, natural daylight is reducing. So if you are working at home, making sure that you use the most and make the most of the time of natural daylight, that's very useful. Um, making sure you get your lighting right from your desk. If you are working, say beyond, you know, at the moment, three, four o'clock when it's getting darker, um, a desk lamp is useful as well. My recommendations, if you do have a desk lamp, would be to make sure that you point it downwards. Don't point it across the desk. And um, maybe towards kind of like where paperwork is and things like that, because then you also create shadows as well. Makes it harder for you to read. You change your body position. You might move. You might lean forward more. You might strain your neck over time. Keep doing that. So the idea basically that you um, adopt certain kind of protocols in place. Lighting is one. Temperature. Um, we also would be looking at humidity as well. Um, they're important. You know. Uh, eyesight, so our eyes, so we're trying to give our eyes a rest as well. We look at not just physical parts, or just uh, um, let's say um, neck and back and things like that. We'd also be thinking about eyes as well. Can we, by means, uh, look away from the desk? Can we do that for 20 seconds at a, an object that's further away? So we have the 2020 rule as well that we'll be thinking about. Um, we basically we look at an object or something that's at least 20 meters away for 20 seconds. It helps to reset your eyes uh, because a lot of us are spending more time at uh, you know laptops, computers that are much more close to us. So they're kind of more of the additional considerations I'll be looking at with someone. Thanks, Jamie. That's that's brilliant. Um, I'll give you a heads up on some of the questions. We've got questions coming in about tennis elbow, and we've also got a question about the the how slouching can actually relieve skeletal pressure potentially. So have a think about those, but um, we're going to move on now to, to Fatima Parker, who is going to take us through some desk Pilates. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today um, at Perfect Balance Clinic. It's a real privilege to have all of you. So I'm just going to run through a few slides before I do start the actual Pilates. So my Pilates is going to be a combination of something we call as the Alexandra technique, along with the Pilates, along with uh, some um, sitting advice that I'm going to give you using the Alexandra technique. Um, Alexandra is something I really specialize in and it is a technique which helps 
you actually use your normal muscles without straining them too much. So usually when people think about posture, they usually think that it is about putting your shoulders back, sitting right up. But in reality, when we go to do those things, all that's happening is there's a lot of tension going from your upper back to your lower back, which ends up causing a lot of pain in your lower back. So um, Alexander Technique is a lot more about uh, using your natural muscles, feeding back to your brain to make it a more comfortable sitting posture. Because at the end of it, sitting is not, um, posture is not a simplistic matter. It is something that you need to constantly, it's a mindset. It's about getting comfortable with your own body and knowing what suits your body rather than correcting yourself constantly. Because the more you're just gonna try and push your shoulders back, sit up straight, the more strain it's going to cause. So it's gonna be a combination of the two. So I'm just going to start by sharing my slides today. Um, as well, there is a really good uh, posture ebook on Perfect Balance Clinic website. I have shared the link in the chat, Mike, so I don't know if you can share it with the attendees. But it's a book that I have written on posture, uh, along with Stephen McKinday. So possibly something you all want to ha download. It's a free ebook, um, and it's a 90-day posture challenge as well. Um, so, just going to start with understanding posture in a very simplistic way. So, of course, we always think about really, I know Mike, you already have asked this question, what is posture? But um, really, I want you all to understand that it is a complex mixture of your individual structure, your habit, your mind, your body, your movement patterns, your breathing. Breathing is a very important part of posture. And this is something I'm going to take you through today because relaxing in your body is the most ideal way of getting an ideal posture. The more stressed and tense you are, the less breathing, the worse posture. It's always a triangle and it's really important to remember that. Um, and it kind of affects our nervous system and hence this is where Alexander Technique really comes into the play because it teaches you to relax within your body and gives a positive feedback to your mind, which helps in getting a better posture. Um, I guess we all would agree that posture and body language is the first thing that anybody notices about us when we enter a room. It is said as well that confident people tend to have their bodies differently um, in terms as as opposed to anybody who's quite stressed. We always see them with a much more slow posture, much more stress, much more holding the shoulders more stiffer. And this is something we usually see at our clinic at Perfect Balance quite a bit. Now, um, this is something I've, I have always been really passionate about is helping my clients understand the relationship between the mind and body. As I said, a stressed posture will be very stiff shoulders, very stiff lower back, and we see this in our clinic. So anybody who's coming into um, our practice at Perfect Balance and saying that, oh, I got a really stiff shoulder or it's really stiff lower back, I tend to always put the question forward that how are your stress levels? Have you been um, stressed about something? We believe in a very holistic approach in this uh, at Perfect Balance. Uh, and um, as Jamie mentioned earlier, we will take you through a number of things from diagnostics to the way you walk to your mind and your body. So I kind of want you to understand here about the, what environmental factors, how our body responds emotionally and what behavioral outcomes we have. So as Jamie kind of mentioned about the physical space, the natural environmental surroundings, whether you have gone through any trauma. So by physical space, again, is your desk really cluttered? How is the natural light coming into your room? All this has a massive effect on how we, um, how we respond uh, to certain, how our body's responding posturally to our everyday activities. So either emotionally we can respond to it by being satisfied, dissatisfied, or most of the time what happens is we're just building stress, which eventually outbursts into a number of inflammations and pain. This is something I see massively at my practice. Um, they'll come out with, oh, all of a sudden I've got the tennis elbow being one. I know there's a question on that. Um, so something to think about, how, how stressed are you at present? Um, and then really a lot of it comes down to acceptance or whether we choose to neglect that you know we are having an emotional response here we are going through a lot of inflammations and pains in our body 
So it comes with that, or are we going to address and do something about this? What are the behavior outcomes that, that results uh, as a result of this emotional response is, are we going to accept or are we going to go towards a resolution? Uh, are we going to, avoidance will just lead to a lot of depression and physical ailments like aches and pains, etc. Now, of course, there is a lot of anatomical uh, changes as well that can happen. So it doesn't really have to be only emotional, but this is one factor that I see massively that plays a part in pain and inflammation in our clinic. And hence, we even offer nutrition as a huge part of um, our entire holistic approach. Just trying to understand a bit about our postural muscles That's here. Fine. Sorry to interrupt. Could you just um, do, go up to slideshow up in the orange bar and just press start, um, start slideshow? So it's just up a bit from where you are. Uh, yes, of course, sorry. Just so we can see it, folks. I, I think we've had a couple of comments of people not being able to see everything. Slideshow, set up slideshow. Um, sorry. Just, just, just up on the orange bar from there, just up on the orange bar and just across a bit. Should uh, say slideshow. Yeah, so I am, oh, is that it? Is that correct? Can you see it? Or? Um, if yeah, you try you're in the right part, Batma. Just go back to where you were a second ago, where you had slideshow. Yeah. Go beginning, or from current slide, second one along. Perfect. Okay. Sorry, Batma. No, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, thank you for that. Okay, so I'm just going to go through a few muscles which highly get affected because of poor posture. So I think the maximum stress that everybody carries around their body is usually around the neck and the shoulders and around there as well. So we will get a lot of people coming in with neck pain. And eventually when you end up getting a lot of tightness along these muscles over here, what happens is we end up flexing a lot at our neck and hence this just leads to a slouched posture there. And we bring our shoulders forward and then all of that basically eventually affects our lower back here. So something we need to really think about is um, releasing these muscles strengthening up your core and your lower back here. Um, it can cause a lot of stiffness in our shoulders. Any stiffness in our shoulders can again lead to um, pain in our
Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.